Welcome back. Most future recruits spend time playing military-themed video games, preparing for the weapons and missions they'll face in the Army. In this installment of The Making of a Soldier, Kenya Mills takes us back to Sand Hill, where we'll see how the weapons get bigger and louder and the troops get a much-needed reality check. Here's the story. Fire! It's everything they joined the Army to do. Weapons training not even the most realistic video games can prepare you for. And this is how it all begins. Palm facing scour, pull to the rear. Observe. Compared to the video games, all you gotta do is pull the, the weapon out of your back and start firing. Push the charge handle back into the forward and lock position. Not as easy as just flipping a button on your uh, controller, but uh, it's a lot more fun. With your non-firing hand, place the weapon on safe. Return the charge handle forward. There's more to do than just fire. So it's really complicated. Hold the weapon like this. It's complicated. That's an understatement. You will not hold it like this. The basic training troops are now learning the reality of firing some of the Army's most complex weapons. Do not forget to lift the feed tray. Because in reality, it takes multiple steps to properly operate any one of these weapons. Most weapon systems is usually about, I would say, an average of 10 steps to it. Because you have everything from clearing, reassemble the weapon, function check the weapon, uh, how to load and unload that weapon system carefully. Close it. The brass will go towards the grass. In just two days, these troops are learning to fire a vast array of the Army's heavy weapons, like the M240 Bravo medium machine gun, the 50 caliber heavy machine gun, the Mark 19 grenade launcher, the M249 squad automatic weapon, and the AT4 light anti-tank weapon. That's five weapons in two days. Is everybody tracking? And that's just a fraction of the weapons training experience here at Army Basic Training. Well, this week, it seems like it's been the longest week. We've shot so many different weapon systems. Uh, yesterday, we shot the, uh, I don't know what it was. I'm trying to remember the first class, because I got two classes back to back. So I was confusing one with the other. One finger on the phone. Now two in the magazine. Use your other hand. They usually will not retain all of it. It's a lot of information. They're tired, they're sleepy, they're hot and hungry. But as long as we can get them the basics and they can swiftly execute and get off the range, we're happy with that. Once you train them time and time and time and time again, we do it all day, every day, that it almost comes second nature to them. So once they do have to perform one of those steps in the combat zone, under fire, they can do it without even thinking about it. And once it becomes second nature, the rest of the training starts to feel kind of fun. <laughs> Most everybody joins the Army, becomes soldiers, so they could shoot stuff, blow stuff up. It's really awesome. It's an experience, a once a lifetime experience. We're really happy to be here, and we're actually having fun for once in basic. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're wondering how all this learning can be so much fun, just look at the size of that back blast. Like a car stereo, a real strong car stereo. The bass in your chest, it thumped, and especially when it hit down there. I loved it. <laughs> That's a good time. There's nothing like it. The adrenaline, it just, it charges you up beyond anything you've ever experienced. It's an adrenaline junkie's dream come true, an experience no video game could ever equal. Things like I said earlier, you only see on video games before, now it's real life for us. Huh? Kenya Mills. For Benning TV. Next start. And if you thought those weapons were intense, on the next episode of The Making of a Soldier, the troops learn how to throw a smaller weapon that packs a lot of punch. Make sure to tune in.